Well, hello, Mr. Wynn. I can't believe I got you to come to my channel. I am such a huge fan. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. I mean, I felt the same way. I couldn't believe you invited me. So it's super flattering. Are you kidding? And I'm to be here. Are you kidding? I follow you religiously. It's yeah. so much fun. And I love how you, because can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, it's kind of a long story. I mean, I used to work in sales. I got really into public speaking. Like I got really good at it. I won a few awards and things. Oh, so wow. originally the channel, thanks, yeah, was going to be uh, about public speaking. But also public speaking, you're doing a lot of reading people. So I would make videos on how to be a public speaker. Then it was more like communication in general. Because if you could tell a good story in a speech, you could do it at a party or whatever. But I was constantly trying different things, seeing what people liked. So I started analyzing people, like different celebrities, like, does this look true? Does this look false? And I ended up doing just one video on Meghan Markle just because she was a good example. It was nothing personal against her um, because she was lying so much. And it was like, here's a way to read a lie. And then that's how my channel went in that different direction. So I had a lot of experience with communicating, and now it just became more analysis, uh, mostly. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. You know, I, I really like it because you're able, I love it. You can drink on, on screen, by the way. Oh, by okay. the way, guys, you all know that I don't edit my videos. So you're going to get what you're going to get. Yeah, you're going to get you know, nice mistakes and all. There you go. We drink beer and wine. So go for it. <laughs> so, so this is really interesting. So you started like that. And um, do you find that there's a lot of, for me, I worked in diplomacy quite a few years, you know, so we, <sighs> and also, you know, you, through experience, you get to tell things that are so obviously lies. You know, you can, yeah. there's some people who are good at lying because they can lie to a straight face or that, but Meghan Markle is such a terrible liar. And yeah. what is worse when is that she's a terrible public liar. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really funny. I was doing a recent video and it's like with Meghan, she'll lie and her expressions are showing that she's lying. <laughs> um, but then also everyone who talks about the past will confirm she lies. And then there'll be photos and videos confirming she lied, you know, like about her childhood, for example. So it's hilarious. Like, it's like she forgets that there's videos of things or evidence, you know? Can I ask you something? Do you think she forgets or do you think that she doesn't care because she gets away with it anyways? Or do you think that she believes that if she keeps telling the same lie over and over, people will believe it. It's called gaslighting, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, no, you're, I think you're right. I think she does do it because she'll get away with it. And a big thing is absolutely you're right with the gaslighting. Unfortunately, you know, something I'm interested in too is psychology is humans are mostly not logical. You know, I think we have good sets of viewers for who are more thinkers. Um, but a lot of people, the natural human state is just repetition. If something's repeated over and over, people will believe it. Like we'll get our haters on these chat on our channels yeah. who have just heard Megan say something a million times. It makes no sense. And they'll repeat it just because they heard it over and over and they didn't actually look into the look, look into it. Yeah, and if you expose the lie with actual facts, they call you a hater. Oh yeah, a oh, racist. Yeah. You you middle aged white white woman, and I am. Uh -huh. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. No, you know, it's so funny. Yeah, no, that's the craziest thing where people will say stuff like that, and it's like literally reality is like not there. It's like you know, it's like reality's it's left reality. the building. You know, care. like this, like Elvis left the building. Reality's left the building. Yeah, exactly. People. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I thought we'd take it. I'm, I'm going to take a full advantage. And by the way, I've invited Wynn to come to Royal Mass. And uh, if I know how to blackmail him enough, I'm going to be Meghan Markle about it. I'm going to probably harass him until he blocks me on, 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 on oh, email. Yeah. Uh, so he can come to join us on the Royal Mass whenever he can. And wow. the great thing about the Royal Mass is like, we go on for two hours, but people come in and out all the time. You can yeah. come 20 minutes. Oh, I got to go. And then you go. And then if you're back, oh, you go back in, you know, so it's very informal. It's literally like a group of friends talking, you know, wow. and sharing what is going on. So it's going to, and it's going to be nice to have another boy because we only uh -huh. have Andrew and Ron and sometimes uh -huh. Markle, you know, junior, but Thomas Markle sometimes is not there. So it's poor Andrew 
from ADA uh -huh. POV. Um, uh -huh. and, and Ron, uh -huh. who's the, the, and it's like, you know, and there's like eight women around. So uh -huh. it's going to be fun to have you if you can make it. But yeah. I thought, I thought we start from the beginning when it comes to Harry and Meghan Markle, their official first, uh, how do I say, debutant, the de debuting of the, <laughs> yeah. the world, which was that very, very infamous, now infamous. And I say infamous because there's so many lies there. So, mm. you know, and you know what? It's something funny when, because when I, when I saw that interview, and even before that, I was tweeting back when it was Twitter. She's a con artist. She's just going to take off to California. Wow. She's, and my account, because I, on the wedding day, on the wedding day, when she came out, I posted, that's it. The countdown for California trip starts now. This woman is taking off. Wow. <laughs> anymore, right? My account was banned. Oh, my gosh. My account was suspended, and it, I only got it back. When Elon Musk bought bought X, wow, that's yeah. that, it's crazy the amount of influence that that people have. Like you just said, she's gonna go to California. Like you're not allowed to. Say, and you were right. I'm also you had it right away as well. well and, I, and, and I also said she's she's talking to Oprah. She's gonna do an Oprah special. She's gonna do reality. Wow. I did it because I have sources too, you know. But wow. and they were telling me this, and I'm like, oh, you're a hater. You were gonna report you for racist and all. Oh and they my put in my account and my account because it was woke back then. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, 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 they actually, my account was suspended. And then all of a sudden, one day, like a week after Elon bought it, I see, I get an email in order to yeah. access your Twitter account. This is the, I'm like, what? what? Wow. I didn't even ask him. And then, and then I just logged in and I was like, I managed to log in. I'm like, shit. Oh, I wow, did. that's so cool. For I, me, that's scary though, that you can get banned that way. Just people are like, and again, that's also how like the truth doesn't matter. Just like, you know, words changing meaning, you know, like you said, you're not even white or fully white. They could say you're this, you're this and, and Megan and is whiter than me, by the way. She even has freckles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's true. It's true. I, I mean, I've gotten stuff like that on videos too. It'll be like Megan is like what are your white middle aged man doing? No, you're not middle aged, yeah. you're young. Oh thanks. You're yeah. a hater. You're a hater. Yeah, it's crazy. But what you what do you think one... about doing that? Sorry, what did you say? Oh no, say like you'll have something about like Megan like disrespecting Serena Williams or something. And then they'll be like, oh about Megan. I'm like like you know, it's just crazy. You know, it's like, you know what I'm going to send you. I don't know if you've seen Meghan Markle's interview video view in Ukraine, 2004. No. Oh, oh my 2004. I yeah, have she harassed and harassed this. In, you, and I, it's very interesting because in 2004 was the year that Joe Biden went three times as VP to Ukraine. And then Meghan Markle managed to harass a university so they could uh -huh. video, she can do a video interview, right? A video, I uh -huh. call it video view. And she talked for about 30 minutes and then she's falsely claiming she speaks Argentinian. Uh -huh. I can tell you that that language doesn't exist in Spanish. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, she says she's, that? Oh, my. That's yeah, she says she speaks Argentinian. There's no such, it's Spanish. She it's actually like she says, says that? Yeah, oh, I want to see she that. Yes. She Argentina. She said it many times. She speaks Argentinian. Even in her old CV, she says she spoke Argentinian. What? How dumb can you be? Yeah, it's Argentinian Spanish with show, right? Like, yo, is show. Oh, it's the same Post thing. Show. It's, 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 it's like accent. me saying, I speak Texan. Yeah, yeah. I speak New nice. Yorker. It's, it's yeah. English. Yeah. You know? But that's that's, I'll send you that video because she's in Ukraine and you can see her body language and she falsely claims that she was working with Hillary Clinton in, in her campaign. Hillary Clinton didn't actually announce that she was running for president, I believe, in early 2006 or 2005, uh -huh. sorry, early 2005. So when Meghan Markle did that video of you, mm -hmm. nobody had asked her. But it's interesting that she was even then back in Ukraine in 2004, the same year that Joe Biden had been there three times on a personal, once in a personal capacity and whatever. But I'll send yeah. it to you. I'll send it to you. So do you think, I, I thought we could start with the interview, yeah. or the engagement interview. And you just sure. tell me stop when you want to say something, okay? Okay, sure. Because I thought it'd Here. be very interesting. Yeah, we just go through a bit of it. Yeah. 
Am I doing it right? Let me see. Oh, it looked good to me. On my end, it looked. There we go. Okay. Oh, that looks great. Stop there because you there. And we're going to start there, okay? All right. So let's go. Oh, shit. Thank you. Yeah. Can we start with the proposal and the actual moment of your engagement? When did it happen? How did it happen? Uh, it happened uh, a few weeks ago, um, earlier this month, here at, at our cottage. Um, it's a standard, typical it's night for us. Cozy night. Uh, was, what were we doing? Just roasting chicken roasting and having chicken. <laughs> <Fine to> roast. <laughs> well, I roasting chicken. And it just. Uh, I mean, just, just a super quick. Surprise. The super quick things you see how right away the body language it's you know megan grasping his hand with both of hers and especially early in the relationship you'd see it was always that way megan would start and end the physical contact when they're answering a question harry's trying to get the answer right because you're going to see through the interview megan is lying and creating narrative and then finally uh some of my viewers pointed that out megan had this whole thing about how they rescue chickens and now she's talking about we're roasting a chicken, you know? Like, oh, my God. I've forgotten about that. That's yeah, so important. Chickens. Some people are saying that she does voodoo, you know, because she oh. goes, you know, she lived in Jamaica for quite a few months, right? No, I did not. Wow. Oh, I need to get in the. There's a movie called um, License to Wed, which was actually her ex-husband produced Trevor. And oh. you know, Mandy Moore was there, Robin Williams. Um, oh. uh, this Kaczynski guy who's married to Emily Blunt, uh, Jennifer Garner. This is how they were not major stars. The major star there was Mandy Moore and, uh -huh. and Robert Williams. But it was filmed in Vancouver, Jamaica, and in L.A. So Trevor moved to Jamaica for a few months with Meghan Markle. This is why where her love of Jamaica comes from. Uh -huh. And Mandy Moore was there as well with all these people. Jennifer Garner, uh, Joe Kaczynski, that's what his name is? I'm not sure. You know the one that's married to Emily Blunt, the one, the guy from The Office? Huh. Mm. I think it's John Krasinski. He's married to Emily Blunt. Yeah. Oh, John Krasinski. John Krasinski, yeah. Mandy Moore, Robin Williams, Jennifer wow. Gardner. But they were not that famous back then. This is how long ago it was. Wow. The movie License to Wed, yeah. The, the most famous one there was Monday Moore and Robin Williams. May he rest in peace. Yeah. So she lived there, but it's really funny, you know, um, because uh, Monday Moore talked about her knowing her when, you know, they 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 spent New Year's and Christmas together when they filmed that that movie in Jamaica. Wow. wow. Yeah, you I had no her. idea. I didn't yeah. even know she was in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> And it's funny. No, Mayon wasn't in the movie. Oh, she's just hanging out with Trevor. Yeah, she. This is one of the problems she had with her ex-husband because even though he was one of the producers, she could never get a part because she was never a good enough actress. Oh wow! I'm surprised he didn't put her in. Now, yeah, he couldn't. Probably where the divorce he was came in. One of the producers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I know. You know, what was in there? Mindy Kaling, the one that she interviewed in in uh, Spotify. Oh yeah, yeah. She was also there. Yeah. So you know what I find here it's interesting is you're right. Like how she's look at Harry's body language. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's very submissive even then, even though he's taller, he's sunk mm -hmm. in the couch. Whereas yeah. Mark, whereas Markle is on top of him. If you look at him, she's on top of his arm. Mm -hmm. And it's almost in your face kind of thing. What do you think? Absolutely. And that's such a good observation like the on top of the arm because i was thinking of the hands but if you combine the two controlling the hand like that on top of the arm i used to do uh like wrestling and brazilian jiu-jitsu it's like grappling it makes me think almost like that like it's like one of the a move almost you know like very controlling yeah but if you look at it he's like all sitting in the background almost yeah yeah and thinking about that, yeah, really good eye because I, I've noticed Megan's always front and center. And again, her father was a lighting director. I think she's super aware of where the camera is. And I would assume that's very likely to be intentional. Like she probably knows, like move in a little bit. She's going to look a little bigger, a little closer. Yeah, because they had, she had an edit, uh, edit control of this, what was going to be put up. Because if you look oh. at this, there's a lot of space here and very yeah. little space here with Harry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she's closer to the center. Exactly. Wow. She had editing control of the... I found this out through my source. 
because it always bothered me because if you look at it, uh, William and Catherine's and they're both front and center there's little space on both sides you know yeah. like they're very centered but yeah. with Meghan Markle through that the entire interview she's more to the center because she had editing at the end and wow. look at the whole space here and little space here if you look yeah. at her, she's more in the middle absolutely she, I mean am I full of shit or do you think that's true no it's definitely the case yeah, and really good observation. And it's funny, it makes me think of like, you know, we do YouTube, I was looking up things with thumbnails. And that is one thing they have, like you cut things into thirds. And uh, like, there's different points of an image that are going to draw attention. And she's exactly there. She's in like the middle, but slightly to the side, whereas Harry's kind of off to the side. And yeah, it, that is the effect you get when you're watching. It's like Megan, and then there's like, the backup or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty much on, like in all her videos where she's literally shoving Harry to the side, you know, and some yeah. of them are like, nah. okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see. Guys, it was so sweet and and natural and very romantic. He got on one knee. Of course. <laughs> was it an instant yes from you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I could barely let you finish proposing. I was like, can I say yes now? She didn't even let me finish. I said, can I say yes? I can I say yes? And then, then there was hugs and I had the ring in my finger. And I was like, can I, can I give you the ring? Just, just a pause here. She did have time to call Jessica Mulroney to tell her he's about to propose now. He's gonna do it. Oh really? Oh, you my know gosh. that? Yeah. Oh, that's, it's in, it's in the Netflix documentary where she actually is filming Harry. She's showing her herself filming Harry when he's preparing uh, the thing with the candles and stuff uh, to get in one knee. And she's phoning Jessica Mulroney. He's about to do it. He's about to do oh, it. Oh my gosh! So it's so funny. Surprise. It's funny because, again, she always says the opposite. Like, she'll say the words that you normally don't say, like, natural. She's like, it was so natural. So it's, like, the exact opposite of natural. And, that you know, like, planned, calling her friends. And I don't know if you notice this. Look at her face here. She's angry because he cut her off. Ah. Uh, she always clenches her jaw. Thomas Markle Jr. even always told us, oh, when she clenches her jaw like that, she is angry. Yeah. Yeah, he used, I, to see her, she, he used to see it all the time. I bet. Yeah, she does it so often. And, you know, I, I noticed with her, I think a lot of times she treats conversations like she's giving a speech. Like there's the one where it's like her mother says something. It's a group conversation. Like she views it like, you know, no one else should talk, you know. Yeah, I know. It's oh, like cool. the control thing. Let's do this now. Let's see. Yeah. She goes, oh, yes, the ring. <laughs> so, no, it was, um, it was a really nice moment. It was just the two of us. And um, I think I managed to catch, catch it by surprise as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And this is how long after you first met? Oh, it would be a year and a half, two, yeah. a little bit more than that. No, just about, about, just about a year and a half, that. yeah. And that's Which funny. Most people would be quite a whirlwind. Is that how it's felt to you? I don't think that I would call it a whirlwind uh, in terms of our relationship. Obviously, there have been layers attached to how public it has become um, after we had a good five, six months almost mm. with just privacy, which was amazing. Um, so, but no, I think... Right there, it's so funny. So first of all, you know, year and a half, two, a bit more. Like she's trying to push that time as much as she can like clearly lying it's kind of like I don't know if someone asks you like I don't know like when did you work on that thing or did you get started you're like oh yeah kind of you know I did a little and then the truth comes out you know she's trying to push that year and a half or maybe it's even less as far as she could well and actually, then when she yeah, just one second so you know that if he's they're given this interview on 2017 November right yeah and they said a year and a half which puts her right in the center of her still dating Corey Vitello Oh my gosh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, because Corey Vitiello, they called it quits in August because uh -huh. she met Harry in May 2016 when he went to Toronto and Corey Vitiello was asked to cook the, 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 the lunch or dinner for the Invictus people that were there. And she insisted oh. on coming along. So oh my it, this is why it's not a good look for her to say that it was longer because yeah. Mary's probably thinking we can't say it's that long there because he's conscious that if they say it's longer than that, then she was too timing. Yeah, she probably was. I mean, 
I think she just, again, doesn't think her things will come out, you know? Like, on the one hand, she was probably, on the other hand, she wants it to sound like it was less planned, so it was less quick. You know, it wasn't like, bag a prince as fast as I can. Uh, you know, it's another funny one. When she was talking about the privacy, you know, it, you know, the we want privacy, she says it was amazing. She almost said it like she was sarcastic. Like she wasn't trying to be, but I think it just came out, you know, like it was amazing. Obviously, she hates privacy. You know, she wants as much attention and publicity as possible. Do you also think she was saying that just to cater to Harry because she knows how paranoid Harry is and just to, to, to you know, it was amazing because she sold it to him that oh, everybody was hounding me, which I actually did a live today. And no, nobody was hounding her, you know, like yeah, it's funny. My, my son and I, he lives about six blocks from her home. Wow. And then, yeah, Toronto police, actually, when she complained to it, the Toronto police didn't need to come because they have CCTV cameras. So uh -huh. they looked at the CCTV footage and there was nothing except the, the photos that she called the PAP because the PAP went on record saying, yeah, Meghan Markle called us to get those pictures of her walking back from the flower shop with the chain that, that had Harry's name on it, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's funny. She called them too. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So here we go. Let's see. We were able to really have so much time just to connect and we never went longer than two weeks without seeing each other even though we were obviously doing a long distance relationship so it's um we made it work how did you first meet uh mm. yes we first met we were introduced actually by a mutual friend who um we will we should protect her privacy protect and not her privacy yeah. too much of that. and um but it was it was literally it was through her and then we met once and then twice back to back two dates in london Mm. um last july yes beginning of july and then it was i think about three maybe four weeks later that i managed to <laughs> persuade her to come and join me one question which of the two now um <sighs> narratives of how they met do you buy because on netflix they said that it was a blind date but that they did go through Instagram before they went to Instagram, you know, like Meghan Markle. But we're going to get to the, the, the Google part, you know, like because she said on Oprah that she never Googled him. But then yeah. when they went to Netflix, they said, well, actually, it was through Instagram. And then we set up dates. And then it wasn't a girl. It was actually Marcos Anderson who set him up on Soho House. Which of the two narratives do you buy? You know, I would say probably the instagram one but there might be a mix and maybe none of it's true you know we don't know like if they're giving multiple lies everything that you know it's like you know it's like i think sometimes you could have someone where they say a lot of things and there's only a few things you can confirm right and you confirm like the one thing that you could confirm whether it's true or not it's a lie i'm not going to say oh that's the only lie they're telling you know, it's like someone gets caught in one lie and like, oh, everything else I said was true, you know? So it's like, obviously there's a lie somewhere. There could be more lies. So I don't know. I, I, the one thing I know for sure is I'm very confident that Megan planned it. You know, she wanted to get status. She wanted to be a princess. I mean, there's videos of her as a kid, like I'm a princess, you know? So all I know is it was definitely not natural and Organic. she didn't know who he was. Yeah. Organic, yeah, or authentic. Authentic, authentic. Yeah. That's disgusting. But do you find that what really surprises me, the reason why I want to ask is because Harry looks comfortable lying. And then he looks comfortable on Netflix saying that it was through Instagram. His yeah. body, look how comfortable he is. Do you want me to repeat it a little bit so you can see what he says? Yeah, sure. Look. We should protect our privacy. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, but no, I think we were able to really have so much time just to connect. And we never went longer than two weeks without seeing each other, even though we were obviously doing a long distance relationship. So it's, um, we made it work. How did you first meet? Uh, mm. Yes, we first met, we were introduced actually by a mutual friend who um, we will- We should protect our privacy. Protect and not her privacy, yeah. too much of that. And, um, 
but it was it was literally it was through her. So he yeah. looks comfortable there, don't you think? A absolutely, yeah. And I think the Instagram one's closer to the truth because that's when they left. This one, they were still trying to like pretend that they were, you know, royals or whatever. Yeah, I agree, and and that's something that's kind of um, really unfortunate because something I noticed with Harry. Uh, he seems pretty un incompetent to me. You know, like I did idiot. public speaking. It's idiot. like an idiot. Yeah, I like, call him the evil British Forrest Gump. Oh, that's funny. That's yeah. Like just before this, I was filming one of his speeches, and it's like he's he's a horrible public speaker. I'm like he's had so much opportunity to be a better speaker, and he's worse than like a random person. And he mumbles, and he's not clear. But then he's actually like very comfortable lying and insulting people. Like the Anderson Cooper interview, he's he was like actually good at that, like saying horrible things about his brother. He just like smiles. He's like, oh, that's fine. So that's a really bad combination, like incompetent at most things, but a competent liar and insult creator. Pretty bad. And not only that, he's better liar than Megan. Yeah. That's look how comfortable he is. Look how look how comfortable. You know, like there are not their usual telltale signs of a liar, like trying to access information. It's like, well, we met through a yeah. very nice because go look at them on Netflix when they ask the same questions and he has exactly the same body language. Yeah, that is such a good point. And I never thought of that before because I've always viewed him as like the bumbling fool, but it's very true. He lies all the time. And with him, you, I don't, yeah, I, I don't pick it up. Like, you know, he's lying. But like him with spare, you know, he lied about like the woman he was first with, her age, all sorts of things, the situation. Yeah, very, very good point. He's a very good liar. We always focus on Megan. This is why yeah. we really don't. But I always said when that that people should really pay attention to him because he's not that much of a naive victim, as people put it, because he's yeah. able to lie like that easily. Yeah. yeah. So let's keep going here. Um, then we met once and then twice back to back two dates in london mm -hmm. um last july yes beginning of july and then it was i think about three maybe four weeks later that i managed to persuade her to come and join me in botswana and we and we we, we camped out with each other under the stars and we spent she came and join me for five days out there which was absolutely fantastic so then we were really by ourselves mm -hmm. um, which i which was crucial to me to make sure that we had a, a chance to, to get to know each other. Yeah. But the friend who introduced you, was she trying to set you up? Yes, it was definitely yes. a setup. <laughs> it was a blind it was date. A, it was a blind date and, for sure. and it's so interesting because we talk about it now. And even then, I you know, because I'm from the States, you don't grow up with the same understanding of, of the royal family. And mm. so while I now understand very clearly there's a, a global this interest there, I didn't know this is where editing can be nice. If we just popped up that picture, boom, uh, Meghan Markle in front of the palace, you know? I mean, come on. Like, you know, that. what is she, like 17 there? Lily right yeah. in front of the Buckingham Palace. But, um, you know, I think Harry's a mix of, yeah, he's a lot savvier than I realized, but he's also dumb, you know, like he said, the Forrest Gump. Because something that I've noticed um is that she controlled the narrative of their relationship so well i don't know if this will show up well but i think most people have seen this but just figure it'd be fun irony for uh for when megan's saying oh i've never heard of them you know but um she controlled the narrative so well of the relationship right like she you know harry is like he's half joking but he also believes it like Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, he he's like, I convinced her to come with me. And then later you hear them saying things like she gave her life up for me. And then I gave my life up for her. You know, she, she, she like created this narrative of like, oh, because I'm going to be famous. Exactly what I want. I'm giving up my whole life. So like she was really able to control the story of their relationship within their relationship. Right. Like, she's the prize. She's making sacrifices for him. It's ridiculous. It's like she got so much from him, um, you know, becoming famous, becoming rich, all these things. But the, the narrative, and she planned it. You know, the narrative is the exact opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Too much about him. And so the only thing that I had asked her when she said she wanted to set us up was, 
I had one question. I said, well, is he nice? Because if he wasn't kind, it just didn't, it didn't seem like it would make sense. And so we went and um, had a, met for a drink. And then I think very quickly into that, we said, well, what are we doing tomorrow? We should, yeah. we should meet again. What are we doing tomorrow? Let's meet again. And then it was like, right, diaries. We need to get the diaries out and find out how we're going to make this work. Because I was off to Africa for a month. Mm. Um, she was working. And we just said, right, where's, where's the gap? And the gap happened to be in the perfect place. Um, so. so how much did you, Prince Harry, know about Meghan? Had you seen her on TV? No, I'd, I'd never <laughs> never even heard about her until this friend said, Meghan Markle. I was like, right, OK, so, give, me, give me a bit of back. <laughs> yeah, so much nonsense. Well, I, I guess I'll go backwards. He later said that it was uh, William and Catherine's favourite show with Suits. So that's how are those things both true? Uh, the other thing is, again, controlling that narrative. Megan constantly made it like she was this in-demand actress. She was so busy. I think her whole calendar was like bag of prints. You know, she wrote up some fake thing. And then when she said, um, is he kind? She shrugs. Like, you don't shrug when you're saying something like true. Like it was out of context. Right? Like, if someone's like, yeah, like, I, I had chicken this morning. Shrug. I, it doesn't, it's out of context. For me, it's like shrugging, like, yeah, I did my homework. You know, like, do you believe me? You know, like you said, she's a really bad liar. It's like, she has so many tells. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, I mean, that she didn't know anything. Let's not forget that she was, her her best friend in Akupriti said that um, she was obsessed with Princess Diana. She even had the books of Princess Diana when she died and that they spent, that Megan rewatched over and over and over oh, the funeral God. crying with the Akupriti, yeah. her, ch her childhood friends. She said that, that she always, that they spent crying, like Megan Markle was crying, like it was her mother who died or something like that. Yeah. And they were, Back then it was with VHS, you know, you don't probably don't know what that is. Oh, but it was a tape, you know, and they played it and she said that the, the tape even broke because they, she rewatched it so many times. Oh. So the fact that she lies and says she didn't know about Harry, I mean, Harry walked behind that coffin and it was world news. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Another thing too, just I noticed with Megan is when you have somebody and no one from their past is still around or likes them. Like every relationship they've had, they've had a falling out. You know, falling outs happen. But if it's every single time, there's a common theme there, right? You know, they're, they're probably not a great person, you know? You know, my mate that's coming, she's, uh, she, I've known her since I was 17. And then my other best mate, you know, I've known her Marines, for almost, yeah. God knows I'm 55. So wow. I've been in for quite a long time, you know, yeah. like meets from forever. Yeah. You know, it's, Megan, I don't understand this. She doesn't have anybody. Yeah. And, and beyond that, like they're like, they dislike her. Like so many people are willing to come out and say she's lying, you know, like, yeah. Let's go here. Yeah. background what's, <laughs> like what's going on here so no i'd never i'd, I'd never watched suits I'd, I'd never heard of megan before mm -hmm. and i was beautifully surprised when i when i walked into that room and saw her and there she was sitting there i was like okay well i really have to up, up, up my game <laughs> i'm gonna sit down and have a and make sure i've got a good chat i think for both of us so it was it was really refreshing because given that i didn't know a lot about him yeah. everything that i've learned about him i learned through why do you think it's important for her to say, emphasize that she didn't know anything about him? Do you think it's to convince him that she didn't know about him in order to uh, minimize his importance? Or wh why do you I think, think that? Him? And I, I think Megan, um, she she controls the narrative so much and she just says the opposite of the truth. And she actually, like we've said, she's a horrible liar. She draws attention to the fact that she's lying. So I think just it's very simple. She 100% knew who he was. She 100% wanted to bag a prince. Like, as very obviously, she probably wanted to be Diana. So she planned it out. It was completely unnatural. So she just repeats the opposite of the truth over and over. I think it's almost as simple as that. She's like, I didn't know who he was. And then she cut him off and says, we. Um, and, and then she's like, it was very natural. I didn't know anything about him. So she repeats over and over. So I think maybe she gets like self-conscious. She knows she's lying and she has the story she wants to put out there. It could be that, or maybe she's just trying to use that repetition. Like we've said, you know, she has these PR companies, maybe they advise her. If you say something enough times, people believe it, right? Like if you say everyone dislikes you because of discrimination enough times, 
people believe it, even if they look at you and they're like, wait a second, <laughs> you, you know, so uh, it could be that as well. Okay. Through him, as opposed to having grown up around different news stories or tabloids or whatever else, anything I learned about him and his family was what he would share with me and vice versa. So for That's both fresh. of us, it was just a really authentic and organic way to get to know each other. And was that quite refreshing for you in the way that you've been brought up, you know, with a lot of people knowing a lot about you? Was it refreshing? Or thinking they know. Or thinking they exactly. know. Yeah, no, it was hugely refreshing to be able to get to, to know someone who isn't necessarily within your circle, doesn't know much about me, I don't know about much about her. So to be able to start almost afresh, right from the beginning and getting to know each other step by step, um, and then taking that huge leap of only two dates and then <laughs> and then going basically effectively on in holiday together nowhere. in the middle of nowhere and you know showing a showing a tent together and all that kind of stuff it was yeah, it was it was fantastic it was absolutely amazing to get to know her mm -hmm. um as, as quickly as I did and starting a long distance relationship you were working on suits you had I imagine a packed filming schedule you've mm -hmm. got lots of commitments of your own how hard was it to keep things going her freaking it was yeah it was just a choice right I think that very early on when we realized we were going to commit just to pause you know that suits was yeah. already winding down because the two main characters were leaving and she oh, actually yeah. she actually had been told that actually her role had been written out so she didn't you know that 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 is a given but you can see how uncomfortable she is about that can you like the way she just oh yeah well her expression look at this words pause that's something that uh that I laugh about. If you just randomly pause almost anything with Harry or Meghan, it's like nine times out of 10, Meghan looks mad and Harry looks confused, even if they're separate. Like, it's just like always some random express, like if you just do it randomly. So the way she's looking at the interviewer, right? And then Harry's like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> it's all the time. But yeah, I was noticing her, her nodding and staring at the interviewer was really weird. And one of the things she was saying too, you know, you could see like she's looking to see like, is this being believed? You know, like she's like hyper-focused, like is my lie being believed? Yeah. Yeah, because she's looking like reassurance from the other person it, interviewing. Yeah. The one thing I noticed from the interviewer, she wasn't that happy. Not like the other, like, you know, in the other interviews, oh, no. she's smiling and stuff. This woman is like, how did you meet? I mean, yeah. That's what I was thinking. This, I mean, yeah, that's funny, right? It's like so obviously, but like, I just think like again, I think it's a mix. Like Harry has a, like again, I used to think he was just a vic, you know, manipulated. He's both. He he he's got his bad side. He's done really bad things, but he also was such an easy mark and was manipulated. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. both. You, you, you know, like I'm just thinking like how dumb he's like. Yeah, she didn't know who I was. She, you know, uh, this woman just showed up and like tried to seduce me I'm a prince like she totally would have done it if I was working at McDonald's you know oh, oh yeah right yeah, yeah you right. know and it's funny because I believe that she wants to put him on equal footing as her just oh. like you didn't know anything about me I didn't know anything about you because yeah. I'm yeah absolutely very good point absolutely and if anything she made it uneven she made it like I'm so attractive you know he's like you know that narrative he's like I have to up my game and then later the narrative that she gave her life up for him and she um, that that narrative became very strong that um, that coming into his world was like being threatened by the paparazzi. So she made it like you being a famous prince is a deterrent. So like, you know, sort of like abuse where someone's like, oh, you're no good. No one else would ever love you. Like if you hear them talk, that's the narrative is that him being a prince is like a huge deterrent because of all she'd have to deal with when yeah. really that's what she wanted. Yeah, all along. It to each other. And we knew we had to invest the time and the energy and whatever it took to make that happen. And um, so, yes, with the filming schedule, it was not the easiest because it, of course, included a lot of travel back and forth. But just real quick. I don't think you've had any idea what time zone you've been on for that. Again, that narrative, I'll say it really quickly. The filming schedule, there's no mention of what Harry's doing. So the narrative is it was she's the busy actress. No talk of he, he's busy as well. Never mind that he was represent. He actually represented, you know, one of the biggest fights they had because he went in December to represent the Queen to the Caribbean, and he was oh, yeah. with Rihanna and everything, right? And she was busy putting out articles. Oh, Harry's girl, you know, blah blah blah. Harry's girl is this and that because. The funny thing is, if they were that in love, I can understand him not spending Christmas because he had to do the Christmas 
church thing. But yeah. New Year's, she spent it on her own in Iceland. Oh, my. I, I don't know how, what he was thinking. How do you, how'd she get him back? Who knows? No. <laughs> no. Coming over here four days or a week and then going back and then straight into filming the next day, 4 a.m. wake up calls on a Monday, yes. straight into set, you know. And right off the plane and straight to set. And yeah, just coming I'm just, back trying, and to, just trying to stay as close as possible, but, you know, in, on, on two different time zones and five hours apart it does have its challenges. But, mm. um, but we, you know, we made it work and, 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 and now we're here. So we're thrilled. But in, in the case of your relationship, unlike for most people, there's this whole layer of what it means to get involved with someone from the royal Thanks. family. Mm -hmm. How much of a sense did you have? Megan, of the enormity of what you were getting into, what it might mean for your life. I think I can very safely say, as naive as it sounds now, mm -hmm. having gone through this learning curve in the past so, year and a half, I did not have any understanding. She's just pre-qualifying her lie. You know what I mean? Like all these qualifiers, like I can safely say, I know it sounds naive, but I had no idea. Again, it, the truth wouldn't sound like that. You know, like even if you didn't know like, she goes too extreme in her lie. Like, you know, even if she were, were surprised by the level of um, publicity, maybe she'd be like, yeah, no, I knew it was going to be publicity, but, like, it, it was more than I thought. You wouldn't go on this whole rigmarole, like, oh, I thought I was just going to live alone in the woods or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. like that Kaczynski, you know? <laughs> yeah. Understanding of just what it would be like. I don't think either of us did that. We both said that, even though we yeah, knew I, that it would be... Yeah, I tried to, I tried, I tried to warn... I tried to warn you as much as possible, mm -hmm. but I think both of us were totally surprised by the, the reaction after the first five, six months of when we had to ourselves of what actually happened from then. So I think you can you can have as many conversations as you want and try and prepare as much as possible, but we were we were totally un unprepared for, for what happened after that. The scrutiny. Well, all sorts. <laughs> no, I mean, I think also because there's a misconception that because I have worked in the entertainment industry that this would be something I would be familiar with. But even though I'd been on my show for, I guess, six years at that point and working before that, I've never been part of tabloid culture. I've never been in pop. No, and she tried hard to be part of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no yeah. matter how, you know what? That's where a pre qualifier should have been. Uh -huh. In spite of all my efforts, nobody ever. Yeah, that's funny. Me. Yeah, that's the, yeah, exactly. She really tried. Didn't she announce like some picture with a banana of their engagement? I also always think of um, her acting roles. You've seen the Beverly Hills 90210. Whoa. her in the car I, I just can't get over it it's like you know if you looked at her parts you know like like her parts list her resume you know like briefcase number 24 you know girl in car you know oh my gosh they're actually quite embarrassing this is what oh, you yeah. in the in the website that she has culture yeah. to that degree and and lived relatively quiet life even though i focus so much on my job and um so that was a really stark. Just so you know, I don't know if you know this, but Shallon Lester, I, I don't know if you know who she is. She used to be the editor in chief of Star Magazine way back. Wow. When okay. Meghan Markle was truly a nobody. And she's on record saying that Meghan Markle was the source and that she'd never seen anybody. She would pay them to publish at least three articles a day on her. You know, oh. and she had three PR magazines. This is when she was truly a nobody. And she was a source to give information about other people on set that she came across with as well. I'm not surprised. Wow. Yeah. She said that, that is... she would pay money to, to have at least three stories about her published. That's unreal. You know, and I also think, you know, wonder Harry's family is like, you idiot. You know, they're the royals. They could figure things out. You know, it's like, this is so obviously like, like a swindle. This is a woman who wants to be famous. This is someone not to be trusted, y you know? And, you know, again, Harry was such a little brat then, you know, it's like his brother's like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, no, I'm going to tell everyone that you guys are discriminating. Are and yeah. Yeah, exactly. Difference out of the gate, but, um, and I think we were just hit so hard at the beginning with a lot of mistruths that I made the choice to not read anything. Positive or negative, it just didn't Nonsense. make sense, and instead we focused on. Why was she more crying then if she wasn't reading anything? Exactly. No, it's it's such again. She always says the opposite of the truth. And again, with Harry and Meghan, it's they have their PR companies. 
they say they want privacy. It's like, no, they want whatever they want out to be out and anything that's dissension can't be out. And then they use like word tricks, like bullying and stuff. It's bullying if you disagree with them. You know, if he bullies William, you say, hey, you're being a jerk. You know, that's bullying. You know, they use these word games to, to shut people down, which is dangerous. That's a big thing in society now, changing the meaning of words. Like they'll say, this means this to get rid of it. And then when you argue, the meaning changes again. So you're arguing at something different. All these little tricks. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, it's my opinion, yeah. And all of our energy is just on nurturing our relationship. On us. Yeah. On us. And some of that scrutiny, and you ended up making a very public statement about it, some of that scrutiny was centered. Look at the face of the interviewer. This is what, there's no oh, smile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just look um, at them. And I think we were just anything positive or negative. On us. Yeah. On us. And some of that scrutiny, uh, and yeah. you ended up making a very public statement about it, some of that scrutiny was centered around your ethnicity, mm -hmm. Megan. When yeah. you realized that, what did you think? Of course, it's disheartening. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a shame that that is the climate in this world to focus that much on that or that that would be discriminatory in that sense. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from. And we have never put any focus on that. We've just mm. focused on who we are as a couple. And so when you take all those extra layers away and all of that noise, um, I think it makes it really easy to just enjoy being together and mm. tune all the rest of that out. But now that it is all official, Prince Harry, do you have that sense yeah, that right. the combination of the two <laughs> and your different backgrounds that you it, together... He's wondering, what the f is going on here is oh yeah stupid? you know she's That's not funny. buying what megan is selling and that's what i get good. yeah no good eye because i when i've watched this in the past i'm so focused on harry and megan but yeah it's like she's interviewing about like a disease in the family or something like it's like a funeral um the other thing i noticed is um you know who knows i mean we've those photos was it in skip's wedding megan like screaming at staff and things and you know again her fans will make excuses like normal people you can't just take a random photo and they're like <sighs> in, in a waiter's face you know like it's not normal but i noticed so many times when the cameras start people are like Ugh, of megan so it's like what's happening off camera you know she <laughs> might be probably well we know for sure because there's little glimpses of it probably very pushy very rude you know does things to put people off before the cameras even start you know yeah yeah that's true they represent something new for the royal family um, i don't know if it's something new i think it's um you know it's a for me oh, it's a like an added member of the family it's a it's a yeah it's another, you know it's a look at that, look at that. new for the royal family wow you're right um, i don't know if it's something new i think it's um you know it's a yeah for me, it's a an added member of the family. It's a it's a it's another another team player as part of the the bigger team. And you know, for all of us, all we want to do is be able to carry yeah, out um, the right engagements, carry out our work, yeah. and try and encourage others and the younger generation to be able to see the the world in in the correct sense, rather than um, perhaps being just having a, a distorted view. So you yeah. know, the fact that I the fact that I fell in love with Megan so incredibly quickly. Was a was a sort of confirmation to me that that everything, everything, all the stars were aligned. Everything was just Stupid. perfect. It was oh, this was it. beautiful woman just sort of literally tripped. Oh, that's there, isn't it? Oh my god! First of all, yeah, you're so right. The level of anger it's uncomfortable to watch. Imagine being next to it, and that's why I think Harry's a good mark because he's he's pretty out of it. He's like mumbles and stuff. He's not super like cognizant. So I think he's a good mark because most people you'd be like, what is this crazy woman doing next to me? But also, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Right? Like, like you're just, like, talking. You say, like, some, like, innocuous thing. And they're, like, like losing their mind. Um, but then also he's so dumb where he says us falling in love really fast. That was the confirmation was a good decision. That's the opposite. That's the confirmation. That, yeah, that you were in, like, a whirlwind of emotions or that you were taken advantage of. Uh, you know, it's like the opposite. Like we jumped into things without me doing, knowing anything. That's the opposite of a good decision. Like, mm. yeah. it's terrible. It's terrible to watch. It's actually painful sometimes. It yeah. fell into my life. I <laughs> fell into her life. And the fact that she, I, I know the fact that she'll be really unbelievably good at the job part of it as well. 
um, is obviously a huge, huge relief to me because she'll be able to deal with with everything else that comes with it. But um, no, uh, you know, we're, we're we're a fantastic team. We know we are, and and we'll, we we hope to you know over time try and have as much impact for all the things that we care about as, as much as possible. I am very excited about that. Yeah. And Megan, given your <laughs> yeah, you well, sound excited. Not yeah, ex exactly. It's funny. I was just like the taste, but yeah, it's like you couldn't be less excited. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. And then our throat like flexes. I can't even do a lot of the things. I also was thinking how you pointed out her her arm on top of his. Like I'm just picturing my arm being like that. You're like, Ugh, like it's ridiculous. It would be so uncomfortable. And you know, now that you pointed out the lighting, this is very interesting because if you look at here, the lighting is better. She's more in wow. the center. The lighting is darker. Look how much space there is left here. Look how little wow. space there is here. Look, look at him. Look, look at her arms, how the lighting hits from this side. Yeah, it, that is such a good point. Like now that you mention it, it's, it's a huge contrast, right? Like look at the couch behind her to her right or her left. It, it's white him it looks like it's almost brown because there's so much less light like the lights like over here yeah and this place that she has towards look how this is huge for this guys because we have yeah. to take from this space she takes almost two-thirds of the of the of the thing before like you she the half yeah. of it is around here yeah and, here. and the thing is with this like At people could say people. like these are details it could be nitpick but with megan it's every time like when I say like, oh, look, she's in front of people, she's in the middle. It's not like I'm just looking. It's every single time. It's not a coincidence. Like you literally can't find a photo where she's not pushing her way in the middle. You know, like, yeah, she, she's very conscious of these things. You know what I think it is when that you can easily crop this picture and he's out. Yeah. <laughs> True. So, if you look at all the videos, there's one in particular. I don't know where they do in this video, but Harry's is literally like all the way here you know it's oh just my like gosh little you can literally just black literally you know like even when they're talking to the commonwealth she's like all the yeah. way to the center he really yeah. like peak she, like that yeah loves the attention by the way i'll just say again you know i said if you pause a random video megan looks mad she looks like she's staring at the interviewer and harry looks dumb like like that every time every time we'll see how it comes like, no, no, it, it could be a drinking game but you'd like pass out in like two seconds you know it'd be like is megan look mad oh yeah Harry looks like an idiot please. You were yeah acting every time you had. you'd already been involved in various causes you've been an ambassador for un women mm. What about this new role? I mean, you're going to have an, a bigger platform, a bigger voice. What do you want to do with it? I mean, how ex <laughs> can you imagine? No, I'm not a singer. Um, I think what's been really exciting as we talk about the transition of this out of my career, but into the role is that, as you said, the causes that have been very important to me, I can focus even more energy on because boom, enters yeah. American Riviera Orchard. I just oh, had yeah. Exactly. Very early out of the gate, I think you realize once you have access or a voice that people are willing to listen to with that comes a lot of responsibility, mm. which I take seriously. And at the same time, I think in these beginning few months and now being boots on the ground in the UK, I'm excited to just really get to know more about the different communities here, smaller organizations who are working on the same causes that I've always been passionate about sure. under this umbrella. It's so hard to listen. And, um, and also being able to go around to the Commonwealth. I think it's just yeah. just the beginning of the- There's a lot to do. Really? There's a lot to do. She just <laughs> talks so much. Change. You'll... And, and notice it's talking about like the royals, the work they do, and only Megan talks. Something I've noticed about her is everything's either hers or ours. So if it's someone else's, it's not ours, right? Like, you know, like something that Harry was involved with for like 10 years, she's there for a week, it's now theirs. But anything that was hers is hers. Or even something that was someone else's is hers. So it's always taking over and, and possessing. Absolutely, absolutely. You're getting a new country out of it, mm -hmm. um, a, a husband, obviously, but also oh. giving up, giving, giving up <laughs> your nice. career. Yes, it's nice. Yes. But I, I don't see it as giving anything up. I just see it as a it's change. A, it's, a new, it's a new challenge. It's a new, it's a new chapter, yeah. right? And and also keep in mind, I, I've been working on my show for seven years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are very, very fortunate to be able to have that sort of longevity on a series. And for me, 
once we hit the hundred episode marker, I thought, you know what, I have, I have ticked this box and I feel really proud of the work I've done there. And now it's time to, as you said, work, work as a team mm. with, with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But do you have that sense of responsibility, <laughs> Prince Harry, for what you Harry's expression there was interesting, you know, like, no, work as a team, like, even though he's, right, like, yeah, look, again, she looks hungry, no, no matter what I do, look, look at that, look at Harry's yeah. face. <laughs> oh, this is a funny one, that's a funny one, that's a funny one, yeah, the expressions, you know, that could be an interesting thing, you know, I, I don't know if you ever heard, um, I would love to learn this, I had heard there was, like, um, some study where they do micro expressions, where they sh slow videos way down and their expressions that we aren't conscious of at all. And they could see like a couple's dynamic, you know, like little twitches and, and things. It would be really interesting to do that with like Harry and Meghan versus William and Catherine. I mean, yeah, without, well, with, we can do that. We can certainly do that. Let me yeah. just put you in pause because my mate is here. One second. Yeah. And okay. So you were, you were saying yeah. about this? Oh, yeah, no, we we're talking just about like their micro expressions, how there are experts on that. But in this case, you don't really need to be an expert, you know. It's absolutely disgusting because if you, no matter where you look, and let me see, look at Harry, look at her. Yeah. yeah. It's never a oh, happy yeah. expression, is yeah. it? Yeah. Not one. Oh, yeah. Like that one, yeah. That one. But look at Harry. Yeah. But, but it looks like, um, you know, I've, with her smiles, so many of them, they look kind of look like, that. Look yeah. That. Yeah, what is he thinking? You know, I, I think a lot of what happened might have been his his jealousy. Like maybe he knew in some part of him this isn't the perfect decision, but he's got the jealousy of William and then his brother's like, dude, you're being dumb, you know, and, and he fought it, you know, like he, he fought his family. Oh, wow. That is absolutely true. So what we're going to yeah. do, because we don't want to go, we don't want to take too long. We're going to continue on Monday. We're going to post, we're going to resume this on 1128 because oh, yeah. the junior part is coming when she meets, when she meets, when they talk about meeting the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It is good. Good. And you can also watch the Netflix thing to compare the, about the meeting and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So that'd be awesome. So please like, share, and subscribe. I will leave all the links of winning communication. Which oh, I thank love. You so much. And I will be send me your WhatsApp number so we can send you the link for this Friday's. It's yeah. Thank you, you so much. Uh, and you can, it's very informal. You know, um, but we'll we'll add you on to the tree. So don't worry wow. if you suddenly see added yourself to a group, you're, you'll see if you know names there. Just feel free to say hi, and I'll welcome you to the group. So thank you very Thanks. much, and I'll leave the links and watch for the next. Uh, we left it at eleven twenty-eight, so we'll pick it up on Monday awesome. at this time, and we'll do the family in this interview. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Thanks so very much, Wen, and I'll see you on Friday, sweetie. All right, thanks. See you then.